Hey everybody, welcome back to a new episode of Entropia Content. And today's episode, I got some more plans for how I'm going to get on the mothership. Yesterday's episode, we covered where to get some extra thrusters so that once you're in space in the mothership, you can land on the planets. Now it's neat, I didn't think I mentioned it yesterday's episode. If you're on a mothership, they can use their teleporter device to teleport you up from the planets. But for some reason, Mindark made it a one-way trip, so they can't teleport you back down. You have to take a ship. So that's why it's good to have a ship with some thrusters when you're riding the mothership. Alright, so today what I did, looks like I got a message, but before I do that, let's just cover something quick. Finishing quick is my specialty. <laughs> now here's the, the website for the Very Egg Delivers. And that's the, the name of Yoshi's mothership, I believe. I hope I'm not getting them mixed up. I've rode on so many motherships, sometimes I do. I believe I'm sometimes mixing it up with the Yamato. So I don't know, I'll have to figure that out. So anyways, in order to contact Variag, you go to this website, and they have this chat feature. And some people have been asking how do we get this, the schedule and stuff. It looks like a lot of the message in this chat are from like a year old. So I don't know, maybe they're not using this anymore for ship deliveries? I'll ask. Alright, so it's asking me to put in my stuff, log in with Anominus. I'll put my temporary name as Leland. It says that my temporary name is invalid. Alright. Let's try... Well, I don't get it why it keeps saying that it's in invalid. Alright, so I'll just put that... I'll put it high. Does the ship have a schedule I can look at? And I'll have to come back here and check it later. Maybe I'll leave it open on the other screen for now. Alright, let's check out the mail and see what we got going. Looks like Jeb's message. Alright, so good news. They said Steve is still alive. So, glad to hear, Steve. You're still alive. It's good news. Okay, cool. That's good news. Yeah, I may know Steve. Alright, so I just told them that, yeah, that's good news that Steve is still alive. Let's go for a little adventure, picking up oil to start up the morning. What day is it today? I haven't even checked in a while. Today's Tuesday at 9 a.m. It's probably going to be that guy with the axe there. Oh, geez, I wish it was earlier. I did wake up early, but I got carried away on Facebook. Now, yesterday was a little bit of a stressful day. The whole pandemic situation is getting to my friend group a little. It's like a lot of people in my friend groups are actually have like sick grandmothers and we can't be hanging around with people that are sick just in case it's COVID. And it's weird because the fucking way the Canadian government has it set up, I don't know if it's true or not. Apparently, we're so low on tests that a lot of people in Canada are really sick and we're just not getting tested for COVID. So that's what happened with my friend group. One of my friends went on a, a trip out of town, which right away I was thinking, man, that trip out of town is risky. And then when he went on the trip, he got really sick. And I was like, holy shit, you got really sick on the trip. You should be going for COVID testing. That's what a lot of people were posting in, on his page on Facebook because he was posting how sick he was. And I could have swore he posted that his whole family got sick. But then when I went back and checked the message, I don't know if he changed it or 
Now he's saying that it's not contagious. So I was like, well, how did you catch it if it's not contagious? <laughs> but anyways, no, he said that uh, he went to the hospital, I think he said. But he told them he was really, really sick and that he went on a big trip with a lot of people. But they told him not to get the COVID test, that it's just the flu. But they didn't test for the flu either. So I was like, okay. So that's really sketch. <laughs> but I guess this is how Canada and U.S. is doing politics, right? We like to say the U.S. has more cases than us. Meanwhile, we don't test. And then the U.S. does. So obviously the virus rates are the same in both countries. Just one's testing and one isn't. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but... Yeah, anyway, so I was like really worried. I'm like, holy shit, I'm not going to get a ride with this guy to disc golf because I have to look after my uncle. And if I ride with someone who's sick and they haven't been tested for COVID, that's really sketch, right? So guess what happens? I get to disc golf and he shows up at disc golf and he's not wearing a mask. So right away I said something. I'm like, holy shit, man, you just posted that you're super sick and now you showed up to disc golf. I'm like, did you get a COVID test? What does he say? No, he didn't bother going for a COVID test. Because Canada hospitals aren't doing them or whatever. So I was like, holy fuck, man. That's that's really crazy. It's like, I can't hang out with you because you're sick. And then he started getting really upset. Saying, hey, you're treating me like I'm a fucking plague victim and stuff. And it's like, you're a jackass for isolating from me. I'm like, really? I'm the jackass here, right? So what I did is without posting any names, when I got home, I posted on Facebook. Is it a jackass move to isolate from someone? who was admitting that they're super sick and they just got back from a trip and yeah so I was like holy fuck is, is, is it my fault so a lot of people posted no you're not at fault like this is pandemic rules social isolation when you're sick you're supposed to isolate for two weeks unless you get the COVID test to confirm it's not COVID but I'm like okay so maybe I wasn't being such a jackass well it just so happens that he read that post and then he messaged me, he's like, oh, were you insinuating it was me? And I'm like, well, no, I didn't put anyone's name. I just asked in general, but yes, it was about you. So I was being honest. I'm like, yeah, man, it's like I was fucking freaked out. You came to fucking disc golf, super sick, putting everyone's lives at risk. And then he started yelling at me, telling me off, saying that I'm putting his job at risk. I'm like, I'm putting your job at risk for telling you to follow the fucking pandemic rules? So to try to be the nice guy in the whole situation, I apologize to him. And I'm like, yeah, man, I'm sorry for being such a jerk asking you to fucking follow the pandemic rules. It's like, sorry, if you want to come to disc golf sick, go right ahead, I guess, right? So I don't know. I don't think he's accepted my apology yet. He's deleted me off Facebook. So I'm like, okay. It's like, I don't know. That's kind of a fucked up situation. I guess really in retrospect, he is partially right. I shouldn't have posted anything on Facebook. But I figured leaving the names out of it would be enough that he wouldn't be getting super upset over it. But yeah, I guess that was a jackass move for posting on Facebook. Really, I was thinking what I should have done is just walked away as soon as I seen him coming. Not even have said anything to him. It's like if he wants to do what he wants in his own life, I shouldn't be the one trying to, to judge him and tell him to follow rules. So yeah. I guess that's the method I'm going to go in the future. When I see someone that's really sick and they're not following the pandemic rules, I'm just going to fucking say nothing. And if they get upset and delete me as a friend, I guess so be it. And that's what you got to do these days to keep your family safe, right? Like, I wasn't the only one either. There was other people that were like, holy fuck, man, you came to disc golf and you're super sick? It's like you're putting my family at risk, right? And he wouldn't wear a mask. So I was like, holy shit. It's like, I'm totally against forcing people to wear masks, but I was like, at least when you're sick, you think it'd be a common courtesy to wear one. Like, I always think masks should be optional, so if, like, you're sick and you should have the option to wear it, well, I guess you have the option not to wear it, too, so shouldn't be complaining too much. That's the price of freedom, right? And who knows, maybe he's right and that he doesn't have COVID, and hopefully he doesn't. I'm still wishing him the best. So I don't know, the, the whole way the world situation is working right now, like the disc golf tournament or a club that I joined was supposed to be, we go to the club meeting, everyone gets split up into different teams and you get to meet all the other local disc golfers. 
But I was like, shit, now with the pandemic rules, you go to this golf or disc golf club and you're only allowed to play with the people that you already know, like the friends you came with. So I was like, okay. So now I'm basically just playing with the friends I already know. So there's no point really coming to the club now, is there? <laughs> like yeah, the club has fees involved too. And I was like, oh, the fees aren't too bad as long as I get to hang out with other people, a bit of socializing. Now I'm thinking this whole year is a write-off. It's like as much as I thought, hey, I could try to get by and just ignore the, the pandemic rules and try to have fun. It's all the fun is gone out of everything. It's like it's just causing fights when people show up sick. And then fucking, yeah, and then we don't even get to meet any new people. So really, if I'm just going to play disc golf with my friend group, I might as well just play with them. What's the point of going to the club? <laughs> So, I don't know. I guess I shouldn't get too much into this crap and get more into Entropia. Just figure give an update to what happened to my situation yesterday. Yeah, and sorry guys, I'll try not to post too much more stuff about Pandemic on Facebook all the time. I don't know. It's hard not to because it's the most active thing everyone's talking about these days. What was the good news about Entropia? Yeah, I was kind of considering yesterday the whole discussion that I had with McCormick. I started to realize that a lot of the ex-Entropian players that hate Entropia, it fucking drives them nuts to see people having fun in Entropia. I don't know what it is. It's like, I noticed McCormick, when I mentioned that the Entropia community is a great community and everyone's having a lot of fun, and they we're even helping each other instead of backstabbing each other, like that one guy that's made the auction mistake and he got his deeds back. Man, McCormick was just pissed about that. He's like, there's no way Entropians are having fun. It's like they all backstab each other. So I'm like, okay, so maybe that is like where a lot of these ex-Entropians are coming from. It's a lot of jealousy involved. Like, I don't know what happened with McCormick and Mindark. I'm pretty sure what probably happened was is that he couldn't handle his spending. And he was one of those players that was convinced that the only thing that you can do in Entropia is chase globals. So when you're always chasing globals, you're like, hey, this game is fucking piece of shit because I'm losing money chasing globals. And people got to realize that Entropia, chasing globals is the way you spend extra money. It's not what you're supposed to spend all your money on in the game. It's like the casino. It's like how many people go into the casino with their life savings and spend it all and get mad when they lose, right? Like most people are realizing, hey, I, I shouldn't spend my life savings at the casino because there's a good chance I'm going to lose it. So I should spend some in like investing in stocks or my retirement, maybe a little bit into the fucking casino, not all of it. So I'm like, just say sorry to McCormick for your losses if that's what happened. Maybe he put his life savings into Entropia, convinced that he could win, get rich quick, and they got really angry once he lost it, and has like been on a bitter fucking revenge streak ever since. I don't know, sometimes I get caught up in bitter revenge too, so I'm not going to hold that against them. It's like, that's human nature. It happens. <laughs> right, it looks like I've already got competition here picking up the oil, so I'm going to go check out the motorhead kegs. And I got my vape ready, I'm dying for a hoot. <laughs> no, I was a little bit worried again. I had some bad episodes of stomach issue stuff, but I'm thinking maybe I got Crohn's. Because I was thinking, geez, like, I went past the, the point of, like, isolating for a few weeks and no one else got sick in my house, so I was like, obviously it's not anything contagious. I was thinking food poisoning, but... Food poisoning symptoms went away after about four or five days. But now every time I drink like a whole crap load of chocolate milk or even a whole ton of meat, it doesn't agree with my system to the point where I start getting the food poisoning symptoms again. But yesterday I tried cutting back on the chocolate milk and too much meat and boom, my system was back to normal again. So yeah, hopefully. Now, for a while there, I was thinking, God damn, it's going to be guaranteed that I'm going to have to go to the hospital and get a whole bunch of tests done. I was thinking, shit, I was just there in February getting all that done, so I really shouldn't need to go do it all again already. 
Like I was thinking, even the hospital would be like, shit, it's not even been six months. What are you doing back here? <laughs> but I guess probably it is getting close to six months, yeah, because it was February. Now, I hope everyone liked the NBA games yesterday. Probably not. Well, there's actually a few Entropians that responded with a. Or maybe it was one. An uh, Entropian that responded with comments about the basketball stuff. I think he was saying that Miami, he was cheering for it to make it. I was thinking Miami is one of those teams that gives me a little bit of worries for the Raptors. Because during the regular season, they did beat us two games. And it's pretty rare for other teams to beat us ever, so. I was a little bit thinking that guy knows his stuff because, yeah, Miami, if they have a good luck in the playoffs, they could easily go far. Man, I was watching the Raptors game, and, whoa, it was just like I predicted. We just slaughtered New Jersey, but, yeah, New Jersey did make the game close at 10 points at one point, but, man, we pulled away, and I think we were up by 30 points at one point. So it's nice to see Canada's team do well. I've been a lifelong Raptors fan well, since Chris Bosch's first year, and I watched every game, so I figured I would do a couple basketball videos every now and then on my channel, just because I do know shitloads about basketball. Fuck, I even got a chance to interview the, the coach of the women's basketball team, of the USA women's pro team, or pro, I guess you could call that for a women's league, but they don't really make any money. I guess technically the players get paid, but it's a losing money organization. It's just charity giving money to people that you need to feel sorry for, can't make their own money. I shouldn't pick on women's sports, but I was thinking of women's sports, they should almost kind of like exclusively focus, or maybe not exclusively, but focus more on sports that women are actually more dominant than men. Like when it comes to, say, watching gymnastics, I usually prefer watching women's gymnastics because usually they're more flexible and agile than guys. So that's the one thing with sports leagues is people want to watch the best. So you're going to want to watch a sports league where people are amateurs. It's like most people don't watch amateur sports. Right? Well, we got one person here collecting kegs, but at least I got one. Alright, so let's see if I got any news back. No, nothing back from the, the Viagra chat. No, sorry, I call the the Variag Viagra occasionally. I don't know, to me the names just sound so similar that it's hard not to get them mixed up. Hard not to. <laughs> Pardon the pun. <laughs> get my mind out of the gutter. Now, to be honest, I've never tried Viagra. Because I'm one of those people that needs anti-Viagra. <laughs> I don't know if it's my back issue or what it is, but it's like normally the less of that I can get, the better because, man, I miss being able to sleep on my stomach. <laughs> no, it was weird. My chiropractor was actually showing me. He's like, man, where your back is fucked. He's like, it's really close to the nerves for your organs for fucking sexual stuff. And I was like, oh, fuck. He's like, have you gotten any weird symptoms of that? And I was like, eh, didn't really want to tell him. <laughs> It's like most people are like, oh, they got problems where they need Viagra. I'm like, mine's the opposite. I need anti-Viagra. <laughs> and that's what I was thinking. If I told him that, he'd be like, well, that's not really a problem. I think most people want that. <laughs> now, I'm hoping it's nothing more serious as it develops because, God, that would really suck. No, it's not so bad needing anti-Viagra. Really, all I gotta do is make sure I never try sleeping on my stomach, or that will get a little bit uncomfortable quick. <laughs> now, I do have some measure of self-control, so... I just gotta be a little bit careful. I don't know, who was it? I think, uh, what was it, Jay and Silent Bob? I went to see their comedy routine in Toronto. God, was it funny. Well, it was, it was funny and sad in a way. Because I don't know if anyone knows the story about Jay and Silent Bob. I think they used to be in popular movies. Was it Mallrats or something like that? 
So I don't know, most of their movies are so old that I don't think anyone really knows them anymore. Well, maybe they do. But yeah, Silent Bob, he's he's got his shit together. Like He's a very smart guy, very well articulated. He talks very good, but he's got his buddy, like, uh, Jay. And Jay's had a rough go in life. I didn't even know, but, well, I guess I found out on that trip. Is that Jay is, like, a recovering addict, so he's got, like, a lot of fucking addiction issues. And to the point where he was, like, I'm pretty sure he was in methadone clinics and everything. Like, he got hardcore into the opiates. So, yeah, he's, like, uh... He's still very funny, but you can tell, man, like, when he's up on stage, he's still going through a lot of withdrawal issues and stuff. But, to be honest, like, if he never told anyone that he was going through addiction and stuff, I probably would have never guessed, because he seems to keep it together very well. So, anyways, he was telling stories, Jay was, but, well, some he has the same problem as me. And it's like, uh, when he was on airplanes, he always has to, like, have a blanket nearby, because the slightest movements will start causing, like rising <laughs> so I was like shit yeah it's like that happens to me too when I'm riding in vehicles I'm like fuck I gotta think of fat old ladies or else I'm gonna be needing a blanket to put over myself <laughs> oh last year oh last year Alright, so there's lots of people here collecting kegs now, so I'm going to head out. I'll hit the trade terminal thing. No, Jay and Silent Bob, no, was it Jay? He was telling the rest of that story. How to solve his problem, he goes into the airport washroom and does his business. I'm like, oh man, that was pretty nasty. It's like too much information. <laughs> Yeah, but their show was so funny, like, they were so gross, like, almost all of their comedy was toilet humor, like, hyper-sexualized shit, and then it was so weird, because you look into the audience, and it was just filled with, like, five-year-old kids, I was like, parents, really, you brought your fucking five-year-old kid to see Jay and Silent Bob? It's like, even they, when they're on stage, they're like, you do realize that all of this comedy is going to be hyper-sexualized, fucking talking about sex non-stop, drugs, and fucking everything. And they're like, and you parents brought your kids. <laughs> and then they're like, I forget what they said, something about that the parents should be ashamed themselves, but they would do the same thing or something. <laughs> So yeah, that was weird, because I could have swore the show tickets even said you had to be an adult and show ID to get in, but yet it was fucking packed with kids. <laughs> so anyways, like you could tell, like a lot of the parents are like holding their fucking hands over their kids' ears for part of the show, <laughs> or for big chunks of it. Oh yeah, and then Jay and Silent Bob were so fucking funny when it came time to, uh, you know when like fan expo convention celebrities talk they have a certain time slot once it's up they have to get off the stage and let other people come up and use the stage well jay and silent bob they had the last stage time for the day so what they did is they just decided to not end the show so you could tell like the people from the convention they were getting pissed they're like sending up security guards saying hey jay and silent bob you guys got to get off the stage now the time's over so then what they would tell security they'd be like they would yell to the audience, they'd be like, hey, does anyone want us to continue? And everyone in the audience would go, yeah! So then the security would like back away a little bit, and then they would go for like another half hour, and then security is like, no, really, we have to close the fucking building. And they're like, no. <laughs> and they're like, does anyone in the crowd want us to continue? And everyone would be like, yeah! So it was like, I don't know, it got to the point where it was like an hour or two over the schedule time. <laughs> And I was like, holy fuck, man, these guys just wouldn't listen to security. I think it got to the point where security actually had to, like, escort them off the stage because they couldn't stop performing. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. That was a funny convention. That was one thing that I was thinking really good happened to me with the pandemic. Is I had started to take for granted going to the convention. Like, I went every year, I think, for almost 20 years in a row. So I was starting to get sick of it a little. I'm like, man, getting tired of the crowds, getting tired of getting screwed over by the convention staff. And then I actually didn't go. Well, and that happened to be the year that I got my severe concussion, too. So I was like, 
even though I was canceling Fan Expo, I couldn't have gone either way just because of the health issues. I don't know if anyone's ever had a serious concussion. You know that fucking crowds of people are the worst thing you could be around. So yeah, so anyways, so I started to get really sick and tired of going to conventions and stopped going. I was like, man, I'm never going again. I got fucking sick of it. But then I was like, man, as soon as the pandemic came and I realized like being forced not to go to the convention actually made me realize that I still liked going. So I'm thinking next time the, the pandemic rules are over and we can have a convention, I think I'll get a booth. The only thing I was concerned about is the guys that run the convention, they don't really care about other people, well, not to make fun of them or anything, but I've had a lot of bad issues with the convention. They usually just ignore you or they'll they'll respond saying there's nothing we can do. So I was thinking like, uh, maybe that's uh, what's gonna go, gonna happen is maybe the convention people are just gonna have the convention anyways and they won't care about the social isolation or pandemic rules. So I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm pretty sure it's been canceled because it would be coming up in a week or two. I haven't heard anything about it, so it must be canceled. Yeah, does anyone else like conventions? It was actually the Fan Expo convention that I got an Entropia CD at. I don't know if Mindark had a booth there or what it was, but they were giving away CDs and it was the install CD for Entropia. And I was like, hey, I'm going to try this game. And then when I got home, I realized that I'd already been playing it. Now, for a second out of the corner of my eye, I thought I saw some stones on the ground. But must not have been. Just me. <laughs> And I'll still try to get McCormick on the show, and I don't want to give him such a hard time because I can see where he's coming from. A lot of people hate Entropia. A lot of ex-players lost a lot of money. You know, that's one good thing about doing a little bit of uh, journalism, as I learned to a certain point, you got to try to relate to both sides of the issues because if you don't you're going to be missing half the story and a lot of people want the full story they don't want it half now i've noticed that with me and trump a lot lately at the beginning i liked his presidency because i'm like hey maybe he can actually get the fucking country back on track <coughs> and i really liked his fucking moon plan that's the one thing i still like about trump <coughs> his fucking moon plan kicks ass like compared to the other leaders that have had plans for space exploration Trump's plan is like a million times better than the second best like I don't know if you kept track of Obama but when he was in office he just cancelled well it's funny he expanded NASA's budget but cancelled all the programs so it's basically the socialism He's giving them shitloads more money to do nothing. So I was like, holy fuck, man. I liked his way that he was giving NASA more money, but fucking canceling everything and just letting them golf all day with the money, that was fucking bullshit. So anyways, Trump's like more active with his space program, saying he wants people to go there and build a base and fucking start mining it. None of this bullshit exploring crap. It's like, I don't know, NASA's got some interesting stuff. Like, I don't know. I've been tracking some of my research into gravity wells. I eventually came across the evidence that I found out that Earth actually has two physical sets of poles. Not just the magnetic and physical poles, but the actual physical pole, there's two sets. So then I realized, hey, that's what was causing our ice age, is when our fucking poles switch back from one set to the other. Oh, there's some fruit on the ground. It triggers the fucking ice age. Basically because the pole moved, so now it's going to get colder somewhere else. And yeah, and the last time the pole shifted and moved, it was halfway between, uh, what is it, England and Canada. Sort of like in the middle of the Atlantic there. So that's why fucking England got frozen and why Canada's east coast got frozen. Well, just today, NASA released some of their information. Well, they're admitting that there's a magnetic anomaly that's split in half. So I think what they're hinting at there, without saying it, is that the magnetic North Pole anomaly is like duplicate. We have two sets of it. 
like we're always thinking that the North Pole is different from the magnetic North Pole, but we don't realize that there's two North Poles, physical and two magnetic North Poles. So the two magnetic South Poles are slightly, I think they're in the Ice Age position right now. So it's like they're showing now that they've detected the split in the magnetic field. And they're showing that there's two. And then they're showing the areas around the South Pole where that it's actually, like I think during the Ice Age, the last time the fucking pole was split was over New Zealand and over, yeah, yeah, New Zealand and this, the regular South Pole, Antarctica. Those are the two. So it would travel back and forth between them. And it actually moved up a little bit closer to the tip of South America, where that huge fucking track smash is when you look on the globe. Yeah, that's what I started to realize. Every time you look at the globe, there's actually evidence all over it showing how the gravity wells have affected the planet over time. Like every time there's a track mark, like where the gravity wells change, it fucking leaves a giant track mark. So it's like you can see those track marks. And I think more scientists will realize that it's the track marks once they have the path marked. Because they'll be like, holy shit, this path marked actually is matching the damage on the planet. Now I'm pretty sure I'm going to get into a whole episode about gravity wells, not for Entropia content though, just a separate show. No, but if anyone's interested in NASA, they're usually like, or a lot of Entropians like NASA, so I figured I'd cover a bit of NASA content. But yeah, another thing that NASA's been going on lately, they're admitting, like, this has been well known, I think, since 1996. There's actually the university in my city, the University of Waterloo, Hence the pun. They discovered that water is not rare in the solar system, but it's actually extremely rare to not find water. And the reason for this was is uh, they tested the sun, and they found out that huge amounts of water are just shooting out from the sun and spraying all over the solar system. So they were trying to figure out, like, well, how the hell is all this water coming from the sun? And then there's this thing like ancient times, alchemists knew this, and the holographic universe theory, if anyone, I think a lot of people like that episode, so yeah, I'll mention a bit of that, is part of the holographic universe theory is there's keys, like uh, triggers, that trigger things to spawn in and out of the simulation. So some of these different triggers include temperatures. So if you have a temperature differential where something is super hot, next to something that's super cold, it'll trigger water to spawn in that location. And I guess scientists are gonna have to try to figure it out, like, how is this spawning working? Is it like actually creating fucking elements out of thin air or what's happening? But I imagine there's some sort of science behind it. But anyways, yeah, that's what these scientists realized. They went and looked at the sun and then they tested the area where it, the sun is super hot and where the it meets space where it's super cold guess what happens fucking shit loads of water forms and then the sun sprays it everywhere because the sun has solar winds coming off of it so it's like that's how all the fucking water got all over our solar system is that our fucking sun shoots it out non-stop in huge quantities and anything it hits it'll collect on it right it'll collect on asteroids it'll collect on planets so i don't know like I'm pretty sure like only a few NASA scientists were actually briefed on this discovery because a lot of cases you keep hearing NASA scientists saying water's rare in the solar system. It's like we know that water's not rare since 1996. So I don't know, maybe it's just the memo hasn't gotten around at NASA or maybe there's actually people that are just so convinced one way or the other that they're not willing to look at data that says something. Yeah, it's like when you get a theory that you really like and then you just read supporting documents and you try to ignore everything that counteracts what your theory is. I know I get guilty of that all the time. When I'm researching Atlantis, sometimes I'm like, get those other locations of Atlantis away from me. I don't want to see any of them because I'm convinced that what I have is where it is. <laughs> and then it's like a year or two later, I'm like, fuck, it's not where it is. I should start looking <laughs> at those other places people are telling me. <laughs> Alright, I gotta key map my fucking gun. I'm sick of always going back and changing it. Yeah, so anyways, NASA, when they 
started to like release more of the information that that actually is the case with the fucking sun spraying out water because they were looking at i forget which moon it was not europa but one of the other icy moons they disclose that it's fucking a giant ocean the whole fucking place is just covered with ice and water and they're starting to realize that with more and more of the moons like jupiter's moon saturn's moons they're just fucking giant oceans and now they're they disclose too that the inner core of the ocean is liquid and it's hot so they're like hey if there's hot liquid in a fucking ocean there's almost like a 99 percent chance that there's going to be fish in there so that's kind of a big discovery recently that there should be fish life on other planets or other moons that have oceans maybe nasa will try to say that fish life couldn't form inside that moon and that it'll be completely vacant of any life because that panspermia theory where things come on asteroids but the holographic universe theory will say otherwise that animal species actually spawn when there's any living conditions that support them and that's what's causing them to spawn similar to why animals that went extinct on rare islands and stuff come back from extinction once the habitat's restored because scientists are like what the fuck you restore the habitat it should take millions of years for the habitat to eventually re-evolve these creatures so why is it when you restore the habitat the fucking animals show up in like 10 years it's like 10 years isn't enough for it to re-evolve re right that'd be some pretty fast rapid evolution <laughs> Now, back when I used to write blogs, that was one of the blogs I wrote. It was actually reasonably pro popular. The, the Holographic Universe. I forget, what did I title it? Yeah, I'll try to think about it. Holographic, or Rapid Evolution. The Holographic Universe Theory. I think that's maybe what I called it. Now, so scientist is going to be at a huge disadvantage trying to prove this in a lot of cases because it seems like the observer effect is occurring I don't know if any anyone's noticed that the observer effect actually supports the holographic universe theory as well come on yeah got myself an AI oh fuck killed the wrong one now I was thinking occasionally I shoot the wrong people and I'll just bring them into the turret and collect the loot I'm so glad that you can collect loot from just shooting a mob once I was remembering that, like, all the years before, I'd accidentally shoot a mob, and I was like, fuck, I wish I could get the loot for that shot without having to kill them the rest of the way. Well, if anyone hasn't noticed, now you can. If you shoot a mob once, and you don't want to kill them all the way, just bring them to the turret, they'll kill them the rest of the way, and then you get the rest of the loot. See? Got some more shrapnel there. Isn't that cool? I don't know, I'm pretty sure someone responded in the Entropian comments that that will work to get the, the mission complete. Like, if I want more AI to spawn, I can just shoot a fucking zombie once. Let's go do that experiment. I'll try shooting a zombie once, bringing him to the turret, and shooting another zombie once, bringing him to the turret, and see if how many of those I have to do before AI spawns. But before I do that amazing experiment, let's get a quick message from the sponsor. Today's show was brought to you by Crack. Crack, it'll fuck you up. Woo! All right, welcome back everyone. I really hope this experiment works. Okay, I'm pretty sure I just did a lap around here to show that there was no AI, right? Like I checked, there was none. Did the whole lot. So let's try shooting one mob. A few of them. And then I'll bring them to the turret. Collect the loot from them. And we'll see if it triggers any AI to appear. See that? Like, I have my aimer right on him. I click him to shoot him, and the game still turns me around and gets me to shoot someone else. I think it may be because my aimer wasn't exactly on him, but, God, it's annoying. God bless this. <laughs> All right, let's get the turret to kill him. See how much loot I get. 
quite a bit of loot. Well, quite shitty loot, actually. Alright, so... How many more should I do for this experiment? I remember I was telling someone else about doing this experiment, and they got really upset. They're like, that's an exploit. I'm like, it's not exploit killing mobs and bringing them to the t fucking turret. It even says that you can do it now. And that system planet release or whatever. They're like, hey, you don't have to worry anymore. You can turret the rest of your mobs. Then they're saying, no, you should just do the mission as you can. And I'm like, well, fuck, I want to save as much ammo as I can so I can profit. Don't get so upset that I'm just trying other things in the game. I guess it's a, th a thin line between doing exploits and just trying new shit in the game. Right? It's like, how do you know that when you're trying new shit that you might accidentally uncover an exploit? No, I'm hoping my crafting trick isn't an exploit because I've asked a whole bunch of people before. And they're like, no, that's not an exploit. Because I was thinking of just telling Mindark right away. And then I'm like, well, I should at least not bug Mindark with pointless fucking support cases. And they're like, at least check the frequently asked questions before you do a support case. So what I did is I just told my crafting trick to a few advanced players and asked them if they thought it was a trick or... Or if it's just a strategy that's legit. And they said that they didn't even like the strategy. They thought they were losing loot. So it's definitely not an exploit to them. Alright, so I just got a whole bunch more loot from these mobs. It's weird. It's the same loot every time, right? I wonder if that's like one of the tricks they put into the turret thing. Is it'll always give you the same loot back every time. Alright, now I'll do a lap around the level and see if it spawned any AI. If it did, then I may never have to wait a long time to finish the AI mission again. I could just use the turret to help. Because I don't know if anyone's noticed, but if you try to kill one of these level zero zombies, they're just fucking loaded with health. I don't know how much it is, over 500 easily. So it's a shitload of ammo to kill them. That's what I was thinking. I kind of wish that they would update this to make these zombies a normal amount of health. Like, I don't know why they made them so much health. It's really annoying. Like, you're thinking as a new character, hey, there are some level zero creatures. I should have enough to kill them. It's like, nope. Level zero creatures are fucking uber here. Have so much health, you can't even kill them. Maybe they mean level 0 just by their attack strength, because they are super weak when it comes to attacks. Yeah, so far, no luck. I don't see any AI. Maybe this trick has failed me. Alright, so if anyone wants to... Oh, I was off. I was going to show everyone the proof that there is water coming from the sun. Because I know that's a pretty crazy claim. So here's the article. It's very difficult to find it on Google. A lot of times Google will hide the results for this one. So it's from the Solar Center and Stanford Education website. It's a legit website. And it's from press release out of the University of Waterloo. That's actually the course that I play disc golf on. So I go to this place very often. And it's actually right across the street from the world's most advanced physics lab too. So anyways, if you want to read the information, it basically summarizes what I said. Water's coming off the sun. So, if you ever hear NASA scientists be like, hey, water's rare in the fucking solar system. Like, rare as in the sun spraying it on everything rare? <laughs> now, I think that's in one of my favorite parts about Entropy is all the spaceships and space stuff. I've always been a huge fan of NASA my whole life. 
the only times people are like, how can you be a fan of NASA? You're always criticizing them. Well, I'll be like, I always criticize things that I like. If I'm not criticizing something, chances are I'm just going to not like it and ignore it. I don't know, it's like NASA, the, the amount of money they get in their budget, people are like, oh, they could increase the budget, they could increase the budget, then they could get shit done. It's like they get enough money that they could have fucking colonized the entire solar system by now. But instead, we got a parking lot full of fucking Tesla sports cars. That's what we got out of the deal. It's like, fuck that shit. That kind of pisses me off. I know a lot of the people that work at NASA are nice people and all, but hey, when you're collecting what is it two or no 20 billion dollars a year of taxpayer money is it too much to ask to fucking have some sort of space program involving people going into space like for god's sakes it's been 50 years since someone's been out of orbit and technically orbit isn't even space yet it's still earth orbit Uh, so that's what I was liking about Entropia, all the ways to simulate exploring space until we get to do it in real life with NASA. But I was thinking that will be the ultimate Star Trek show if Trump's moon plan is a success and we start going to the moon. Can you imagine actually watching moon footage with people again? That's going to be fucking wild. Like I was thinking, yeah, I've even seen it on comments, people are like the ultimate TV station. You know how like TV stations have those cameras like one will be like Venice Beach. Or one will be uh, Florida or something, the sunrise, and they'll just have like a, a camera set up and you can turn it to that channel and watch that perspective as like you're there. And then they have the fireplace channel and then they have the aquarium channel. I was thinking NASA, they've been delaying it as long as they can, but one day they're going to not be able to stop it and people are going to demand that we start getting live camera views other than Earth on our TVs. So we could turn it to the Mars channel, see a live video from Mars, turn it to the moon, so we could see what the moon surface is and have that on our TV, or have the camera on the moon pointed at the Earth, so we could see the entire Earth from a distance. So that's the main reason I kind of like the Flat Earth researchers at one point, is they try to force NASA to prove what the Earth looks like from a distance. Because a lot of cases, I don't know why, but NASA has refused to show what the Earth looks like from a distance. Everyone will be like, oh, there's tons of pictures. But yeah, all these pictures are always animations. They never actually show the real Earth. And what I mean by that is they're taking segments of pictures, stitching it together, and making it. So that doesn't really count as a fucking real picture of the whole Earth. It's just a whole collaboration of artists rendering a whole bunch of smaller pictures together. And then the only real picture that we ever had of the Earth was from the Apollo days when they flew to the moon. Because I don't know if anyone's noticed, like, you can't take a picture of the whole Earth anywhere near the Earth. You have to go away from it, right? Like, as a photographer, you'll probably realize this. If you want to get something, the whole object, you can't stand right in front of it or, like, touching it. You have to move far away. So that's why I kind of laugh at the debates when people are like, oh, you can see the curvature of the Earth. It's like, I'm sorry, people that are arguing the curvature of the Earth. None of the cameras that we have can show the curvature of the Earth one way or the other, flat or round, because we're not far enough away from the planet. And actually to see real curvature, you have to get a far ways away from the planet to like get the whole planet in view. As long as you're still close to the planet, all that curvature you're seeing is just the bending of the lens. I'm not saying that the Earth is flat or anything, but I'm just saying like no one's actually seen real curvature yet, except for that Apollo picture. So that's what I was kind of hoping. Maybe one day in our lifetime we could get a picture of the whole Earth. Just settle that debate for good. Because I do get sick of people saying the Earth is flat too. So that's one thing that annoys me about it. It's like, I like the flat re Earth researchers because they demand that NASA show more evidence. But it's like, I don't believe that the Earth is flat, but I still want NASA to show more evidence. So that's why I like them. <laughs> Yeah, so wouldn't that be neat if NASA or any space agency landed a live camera on the moon and had it point at the Earth, so we could just watch the Earth from a distance on our TV anytime we wanted? Do you think anyone would watch that channel? 
And I think the main reason, obviously, that people are jumping to conclusions of why this has never occurred before is that there is some sort of cover-up in space. Like, you think NASA is like an agency, TV ratings would be the one way they could fucking gigantically boost their revenues and pay for, like, more missions and support themselves instead of actually needing to drain the taxpayers so much. But you can tell that NASA is not putting these cameras for live views for some reason. We just got to find out what that reason is, right? NASA for years in the forums has tried to say, oh, we don't have the, the internet capabilities to do it. Now we do. Before they used to say that uh, there wasn't enough satellites around other planets and other moons in order to accomplish that. But now there is. Or they would say, oh, we don't have any live cameras that could film video on the surface. Now the probes do. So we're just kind of at the point, like, why aren't we doing it yet? Like, come on, NASA, you could put this channel of the Earth. Imagine the surface of the moon channel, how many viewers it would get. Rake in fucking trillions of dollars a year in, in ad revenue. Now, I've been periodically checking the Bitcoin's website today, and it appears that they're down for maintenance again. So I won't be doing the free Bitcoin spin, but if anyone's wondering why, that's why. <laughs> Alright, well, today's mission wasn't a complete waste. I did get one AI. Let's check what I got for fruit. Yeah, a decent amount of fruit. A little bit of loot from trying the AI experiment. It's a shame the AI experiment didn't work. I was kind of hoping it would. But at the same time, I was hoping it wouldn't because that make it a little bit too easy to do it. Now, you think most people that play Entropia would like hard games? Because it is a really hard game. So it's like if you were into easy games, you probably wouldn't be playing this one. Now imagine we could... Whoa, look at it. I got 166 of that fruit. That was fucking sick. Imagine we could go back in time and find out what happened. The time when McCormick still loved Entropia, and what was it that changed his view? Maybe I'll make that the title of my video. What makes people hate Entropia? <laughs> Is it the gambling? Is it the losing money? Is it because it's just too difficult of a game to win? Is it the competition? Do you hate losing to players that can pay to win? Maybe it's the whole gambling thing. Do you have a moral issue? It's like, do you hate Entropia because you think it's kids gambling? <laughs> oh. Now, so I think there's a lot of big space news that's going to be coming recently, especially with the whole Pentagon UFO thing where they actually admitted that it was craft from another planet. I was like, what the fuck? It's like, can we really repeat that news? I can't believe that story isn't on CNN every day. Now, so maybe our Earth is really shifting towards the next ice age. And if people are wondering about a pole flip, like north and south flipping, the gravity well research does not support that theory. It actually shows that our planet has relatively stayed close to the same access points for pretty much since it's been formed. So we really aren't flipping north and south poles. I know that some scientists have tried to claim that they found evidence that shows that, but I'd be willing to debate that evidence. Especially with the gravity walls, because the gravity walls show like areas that have carved the planet and it's carved the planet so deep and that part of the planet hasn't changed in like billions of years. So obviously if that's occurring, then it supports the theory that like, I don't know, like this, the shift I'm saying, not north to south poles, but the two sets. So it can shift between the double north pole. Like we have one that's at the very top of the planet that aligns with all the continents very well. And then the second one is between, what is it, the Atlantic. 
So, man, I can't believe that England used to have, like, the Ice Age. I should have realized that when I was looking at maps. We could tell where the other North Pole used to be by where the fucking Ice Age hit worse. Obviously, the, the North Pole new one wasn't near the West Coast because they were spared the Ice Age. I was always wondering that, too. It's like, how did half of our countries get spared the Ice Age and the other half didn't? It's like, what changed that... That's, and then when you put it in the fucking other duplicate model for the other pole, it makes it so obvious. You're like, oh, that's why. It's because the North Pole used to be between the Atlantic. Now, our second North Pole is New Zealand, and I didn't even know that. The New Zealand was fucking ice during the Ice Age. Like, I don't know how many people live in New Zealand even know that. Now, and then I found out studying the gravity wells too, what created the two poles is very long time ago, our south pole was fucking giant. It used to be Australia, Antarctica, and New Zealandia all connected. And if people don't know, New Zealand is actually just an island or a tip of a continent. And the continent that used to be there was called Zealandia. And what happens is, is when the Ice Age forms, the water drops low enough that the land is exposed. And you have another continent the size of the U.S. And it's next to Australia. So anyways, those three continents used to be all merged into one giant South Pole. So I was like, yeah, I didn't even know, like, mainstream researches, they show that, yeah, that actually was the case. It's one of the theories. Actually, I shouldn't say it is the case because Pangea is still a lot of theories involved. There's actually like 10 different models of what Pangea could have looked like. So it's not like one way is the only highway. All lanes open to traffic. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, get my mind out of the gutter. <laughs> Yeah, so this fucking South Pole shit was crazy that at one point, I don't know what caused it, but our South Pole split in half. And when it split in half, it made Australia one half and Antarctica the other, and it's wobbled back and forth ever since. So, yeah, that's what created the fucking, the double sets of poles. So I'm assuming that our planet was well established, had a good one single pole for a long time until the pole split like that. Now I'm going to do a whole presentation on it outside of Entropia with slides and shit. Now to be honest, I always thought that this pole shift thing wouldn't happen in our lifetimes. But I always thought that a pandemic would never happen in our lifetimes. <laughs> so now I'm kind of second guessing that. Now I keep looking at all the different evidence they're showing about these splitting of magnetic fields and stuff. And how they track the movement and the, what is it, the magnetic North Pole. And they're like, where is it moving? It's like, well, fuck, I took the magnetic self pole and look at the path where it's moving it's like fucking obvious it's moving back and forth between australia and, and antarctica and if you look at antarctica and australia on a map like the globe compare them you can see they're identical halves of each other the only thing is one half of it has a little bit of a split because zealandia is underwater Now, the wildest theory I was thinking, like once you start fooling around with gravity well technology, you start to get like a lot of different like access to technology that's like on the verge of being released. It'd be sort of like if someone got a circuit board before Edison or whoever it was was working on electricity. So they'd be like, hey, get a little bit of an insight to what's coming in, in computers if someone handed you a circuit board and said, hey, look at this. So yeah, so once you start looking at gravity well technology, it starts giving you insights to how earthquakes work, how the weather works, how magnetic fields are working.
Now, so I was thinking if the gravity well technology was exploited to the point where I think it's also what's creating evolution to occur or the spawning in and out of the simulation. Sort of like if you were in Star Trek and you found out how to manipulate the holodeck technology. You're like, hey, now we're starting to see how the holodeck works. We got the fucking circuitry figured out. We can start changing the holograms to, to be whatever we want. Found the arch. And now we can access it. So that's sort of what gravity well technology. It's like finding the arch of the holodeck. Now that's when I start to realize that once you have gravity well technology, not only are you going to be able to like travel faster in ships, but you're going to be able to use that technology to fucking change planets and terraform them into whatever you want. Not only the shape of the planets, the weather, but also the life forms that evolve on it. So with gravity well technology, you could go to a planet alter it so that it would eventually have life and that that life would evolve into whatever species you wanted you could just program it in like the arch or the holodeck so i was like hmm it's kind of suspicious eh? maybe that's how we got here <laughs> now that i was thinking too with gravity well technology you could choose where you wanted to put all the water on the planet and collect a whole bunch of it and freeze it so I was like, if I had gravity well technology and someone just said, here, here's the machine, you could do whatever you want with it, you know what I'd be tempted to do? Is I would take all the water, shift it to one of the poles, like say the South Pole or the North Pole or something, make a giant dam of it, like maybe make a giant dam of ice to hold all this fucking water at the pole. And why I would do that is you could simulate a fucking ice age event. So when you had all this water all frozen on one pole, it would drastically lower all the sea levels. And then boom, the earth would have like shitloads of new continents that are giant, as big as the states like Zealandia. And they'd be in tropical locations. So you'd be like, holy fuck, if you had that technology, you could turn earth into a paradise. <coughs> but I was thinking the one flaw to that is if you did that and unbalanced the earth for too long, eventually it would cause it to split. So I was like, maybe that's how the fucking South Pole split. <laughs> the people of Atlantis made a fucking giant ice dam, had a fucking sick planet going for generations, and then all of a sudden the dam broke, or the fucking continent split in half. They're like, oh fuck, everything blew up. Oh, someone wants to buy the body stocking. Does anyone know what the body stocking is? This is the version of clothing that allows women in the game to walk around naked. So I was thinking, isn't it kind of interesting that men aren't allowed to wear a mankini, which still covers stuff. Not much, but still. But yet women are allowed to go all around naked in the game. A bit sexist. Come on, Sweden, aren't we progressive? <laughs> See, I'm not fighting because I want to walk around in mankinis, but I just like, I don't know, less laws. Less regulations. See, my algorithm, as soon as I reach out from my body, I just start disappearing. Because the algorithm is programmed to make anything outside of my body shape disappear. That's why you don't need a green screen to do this and that's a feature with xsplit if anyone wants to check it out i'm pretty sure xsplit they changed to completely free for everyone because of the pandemic but they made one catch that the the, the paid version you can still use for commercial purposes so i don't know what that means like i don't know like i guess you could use xsplit for free but could you still connect collect donations through through youtube when you stream to it i don't know how that works but anyways, yeah, if anyone's into live streaming and they want a green screen background that works without having to set up a green screen, it's just part of XSplit. It's actually one of the software in an XSplit called Virtual Camp, but you can tell that it makes your computer lag quite a bit more. So that's why I was like thinking every time I switch scenes, I'm lagging, but 
I don't know, it's still worth it to me not to have to set up a green screen. Because, I don't know, my room and space is pretty limited, so when I set up a green screen, it takes up a lot of space. Who knows, maybe if I finish that whole pool house deal, then that's all I'll have. Alright, the body stocking is for sale for a TT plus 25, which is kind of funny, you know what I do? I usually buy them for like say 20 pet on auction TT plus and I try to get one that's at next to zero t trade terminal value so it doesn't hold up a lot of my ped value or ped balance and then I'll take it and put it on my shop for say like 80 pet or something ridiculously high price and usually it sells so I don't know what it is with the body stocking is sometimes people see it they just want it so bad they'll pay extra money to get it so just to recommend if anyone wants an item to sell in their shops it sometimes sells pretty good body stocking I noticed is one of them maybe it's the whole theory that sex sells right being able to go around naked is so appealing to some people they're willing to pay more right so yeah maybe I'll make this the show cover the female body stocking <laughs> Alright, so it looks like we're over the hour mark. Sorry I didn't get to entertain everyone with the free Bitcoin spins. I'll try to get another one as soon as the website's done with the updates. And what else was there? I think I covered everything I wanted to in the show today. Sorry if I got off on too many technology and NASA spiels. Hopefully a lot of Entropian players like NASA so they don't mind when I discuss space too much. Uh, what else was there? Oh yeah, I guess I'll go through all my links below. Uh, I got the sex machine. Sorry, it only works for guys right now. It's the latest video game sex machine you can get. But for the ladies, they're hoping an update in the future will include them. In the meantime, you can just call me if you're near Toronto. <laughs> and uh, what else was there? The t-shirts, the Society6 ones. Uh, I set up a store for that, finishing quick as my specialty shirts are for sale. That saying also comes on bed sheets. And if anyone gets some, let me know, because I haven't been checking the store lately. So, yeah, it'd be neat to actually see a, a viewer picture if someone tries it out. I hope it actually works, too. So, yeah, Society6, if you want to try out making your own store for that, I've got the link for that below. So you can sign up through my link and help the show and get your own store going. They put it on so many different items and they do all the work for you. So that's why they have the higher commission fees. So that's one catch, but I think it's a good way to start. And we've got the, the Patreon link. And if anyone doesn't have the money for the Patreon link, they can also do the same thing, but with the Bitcoin Casino. Works the same way where it helps raise money for the show. You get a free spin every hour, and it also gets you tickets into the lottery. So you could win big. And if you happen to win big, a percentage of it goes to my show still too, because you'll be an affiliate. Now, I don't think it actually changes the balance you get. It's just kind of neat that you're helping someone also while you play the lottery. Yeah, and if anyone's worried about that Bitcoin lottery, it's been going for years, hasn't ripped anyone off yet, and it's the most well-established one online for Bitcoin lotteries. So yeah, highly recommend it. And Hido TV, you can collect uh, money for Entropia just by watching videos. And then, of course, Entropia Partners, you can log on, do all the stuff for that. And if anyone is signed up for Entropia Partners through my link, can they just give me a shout in the chat? Because it hasn't showed anyone signing up for it. It seems weird. Because all my other affiliate links, I have like 20 people that have signed up. So I'm wondering why Entropia Partners is the only one no one's tried. Maybe it's because everyone's already signed up, so they can't sign up twice. Hoping that's what it is. Not that the link's broken. <laughs> right, and if anyone happens to get a piece of the body stocking in their vaporizer and it tastes like shit, then give the video a dislike. But if that doesn't happen, you can give it a like. I really appreciate it. And please, make sure, you promise, you won't buy the products from my sponsor. Because it will ruin your life. Bye for now. See you tomorrow, God willing. I'll put the subscribe button and a good video. If YouTube says it's good, you gotta believe him. <laughs>